Here's an example now of a very, very, very popular, well-known industry that has been well-known for making very successful people and also scamming and scheming many people. That is the multi-level marketing industry, direct sales and network marketing industry. This is an industry that I personally have participated in. I can honestly say that I don't think I've ever participated in a scam or an illegal scheme. What I have participated in is business opportunities, investment opportunities that did not work out for me. Clearly it worked out for someone else, right? They had certain skill sets, certain things that they were putting in place that they were applying that I wasn't and they won. They made more money than me. I don't consider that a scam personally, right? There is a belief in the internet world as it relates to this particular industry, the multi-level marketing, direct sales, network marketing. There's some interesting history behind this. And so you've got the anti-crowd. These are like, you know, anti-religion, right? Is that, that's the comparison I would make. It's like, no religion, no matter what, right? And it's like, well, wait a minute, you know, there's a place for religion, it has its place. So the anti-crowd, are basically people that have been hurt by the industry, kind of like people that go to church and then they stop going to church because they were hurt by the church. So they have church hurt. Now they're anti-church, now they're anti-religion, and that's terrible because it puts them further and further and further and further away from God. doesn't make God the scam or church the scam. It's like, no, there was just within that industry, they were hurt, manipulated, intentionally got defrauded in that case. <clears throat> so the anti-crowd, what they believe is no matter what the company is, it's already an illegal scheme, an illegal operation. Now, the problem with that argument is when we look at jurisdiction, United States tax law, and we look at commerce, we look at the protocols, right? The multi-level marketing industry, direct sales industry, network marketing industry has been legitimized, unfortunately or fortunately depending on where you where you sit. So if you're in the fortunate crowd, you, you use that to your leverage, right? You use that to your leverage. The unfortunate crowd, they're just, they're just a loud voice and their goal is to reduce that industry as much as possible. Problem is they are, they're losing miserably because what they don't realize is there's been laws and protocols put in place to actually protect this type of model, right? So let's go over what the model is, just so that you understand, because literally I would, I would say almost every person in the United States, every home at some point in time will probably get approached by a multi-level marketing company, direct sales or network marketing company. At some point in time in your life, you'll probably get approached. That's how huge this industry is. It is a household name, very, very powerful. So let's look at the model. What is the model? of multi-level marketing. Basically, you've got an individual and you've got a company, a legitimate company, right? All the proper documentations and articles of incorporation, all that, it's a, it's a company, there's a product, there's a service. Usually every company will have some sort of staff. It's paid directly from the company itself. In order for a company to make money, it needs a product or a service. In order for anyone to find out about the product or the service, you need a sales. To bypass a sales team, a company can either hire an outside sales team or they can run ads, do marketing, pay for traffic, come to their product, boom. Cuts out this person, the salesperson. All you have is the staff that serve the company, that serves the clients. There's no selling, product or service, all the profit goes into the company. Right. Some companies have an internal sales team. Now this sales team in a traditional company, the company would hire, hire a salesperson as staff, as an employee. They sell, they get an hourly wage and they get commissions, the ability to earn more money and they can rank in the company. That's traditional. In the network marketing world, it's all based on who's first, right? So you have the company starts, they have the product and the service, Maybe they have a staff, maybe they get some funding. They approach people whom they recruit and they teach that first person to recruit three or more people. Maybe it's two or more people. In this example, I'll use three, right? Company recruits one person. They teach that person how to recruit more people. They give them a system, they give them a model, but what they don't give is a 
They're, they're not an employee of the company. So not an employee. So they're the only way this salesperson can generate money is through the sale of a product or service. The company typically does not provide them a guaranteed pay or anything like that. That's usually what most of these direct sales, multi-level or network marketing, right? <clears throat> so what happens now is typically in these kinds of models, the only way to really make a lot of money is you have to actually recruit more than you sell and the actual product or service of that company. So it actually becomes more about recruiting and it's all about you find three who find three who find three, right? Who find three who find three who find three. The problem with that, problem with this model, if you find three who find three who find three who find three who find three, and you keep doing that, you can only go so far before you have actually have more than the actual population of planet Earth. You can only go so many levels deep before you've, before you've recruited the entire planet, which is just not a thing. It's not going to happen, right? Because there's so many other companies that are competing for market share of that particular product or service, right? So why is this such a good model? If you look at it from the perspective of the company and the founder, the reason why this is such a phenomenal model and through laws, regulations, and protocols has been legitimized and protected by big, big money, right? Big money is it's very, very cheap to get these people. It doesn't cost nearly the amount of marketing and ads that would need to be run to sell people on the television or even on Facebook ads. They can leverage the people to do all the selling. And so now you're putting in all these hours, not getting paid a dime for all that marketing effort because you're not an employee. You're not getting a guaranteed base pay purely based off product service and or recruiting. So what happens is in a lot of these companies, you make more money when you recruit an individual rather than when you sell a product. So here's the problem. Technically speaking, from a, when, we, when we look at like the laws and stuff, this is actually not a scam because if it was, these companies would not exist. It just wouldn't be allowed, right? A company goes to register with the Secretary of State and, okay, what is the purpose of your business? The purpose of my business is to scheme people and defraud people and start a, you know, a trafficking company that traffics people into uh, getting into the company by use of manipulation, mindset, motivation, high ticket sales events. It's not gonna work. But you have to understand, this model is very, very protected for whatever reason, right? I may have just given you all the reasons. You can do this deep research yourself. I've, I've gone down the rabbit hole of this stuff. The problem is this isn't really a scam what I just shared with you. It's not a scam what I just shared with you. The problem is, and the only way this would be validated as a scam is if there is no product or service. That's the only way. But now these companies have gotten really smart. They're very smart. So what they do is because they need a product or service in order to be not considered a scam or a scheme, right? The only way this model is actually a scam or a scheme is if there's actually no product or service, like it's immaterial. And it's just putting you through a, like a motivational process of like coaching and whatnot and motivation and recruiting, but there's actually no product. That's when SEC, FINRA, and all these different uh, institutions can come in and probably take that company down, right? So what these companies did was they said, okay, we will recruit Denzel and he'll have to pay for a product. So, so we have proof. What's the product? A membership, right? So yes, he's going to buy a membership and we have to create some kind of a product, some kind of a physical product or service. And we need to require Denzel to pay for that service. So I got to buy the membership that gets me into the business, that gets me the ability to sell or license to sell their product as a distributor. They give you a fancy name, independent business owner, independent, you know, distributor, all this stuff, make it sound sexy. And we need to require him to buy a certain amount of product so that when we get audited, the company, uh, the, the auditors will see, well, no, we, we are selling a product, right? We are selling a service. The problem is, are there actually real customers? Are there actually real customers? So the only way these institutions can actually take this company down is by figuring out if there's real customers or not, and that's very hard to tell. Because Denzel can be a distributor and a customer, and so can Tom and Miner and Brenda. They can be in the business, but then also a customer because they're required to buy the product. You gotta be 
a product of the product. And they sell you all these different things. So again, like everything that I'm sharing with you, it's actually not a scam. That's the, that's kind of like the big dilemma here where it's like, but it, but it sounds like one Denzel it sounds like this is not going to work. Like long-term you did the math. Okay. If I recruit three, who recruit three, who bring three, who bring three, who bring three, like eventually the person that's down here, this guy, right. <clears throat> that's trying to bring three is having a terrible time because they already brought everybody in. They already brought everybody in. So it's really, really hard, very, very competitive. This, Denzel's sitting pretty. So is Minor, Tom and Brenda. But then as it gets lower and lower and lower and lower and lower, it gets very, very, very hard. And then what ends up happening is it crushes. The system crushes on itself because the only way Denzel can keep making more money is by what? Recruiting more people. Well, if the recruiting stops, eventually the money slows down. And if Denzel and Minor and Brenda and Tom were buying Lambos and Jets and we're motivating all these people, right? And then we see the money start to slow down and slow down and slow down. And in order, in order to keep our image, we got to buy another Lambo, another jet, another home, another big thing, another big, you know, vacation, da, da, da. Eventually it comes crashing, burning down. And only then does the SEC, FINRA, all these different organizations come in and shut the company down. But by then thousands of people have been hurt financially speaking, because they bought into a system that unfortunately or fortunately is technically a legitimate system. <clears throat> right. And the reason why this most likely will never be outlawed out of our laws is because that's how traditional companies do the same thing. It's just slightly different. It's a slight difference. A traditional company has all these element, elements, a sales team, a product and a service staff, a network marketing, multi-level company has a company, has a product service, has staff, has a sales team. It's just how these people are getting paid. That makes it a world of difference.